Hello, my name is Tom Poles. I'm a medical oncologist at St Bartholomew's Hospital in London. I'm a professor of urology cancer and the director of Bart's Cancer Centre. I've been asked today to talk about Keynote 426, which is a randomised phase 3 study comparing axitinib and pembrolizumab with sunitinib in patients with metastatic clear cell kidney cancer. Um, the rationale for the trial is that both axitinib, which is a VEGF-targeted therapy, and pembrolizumab, which is a PD-1 inhibitor, have monotherapy activity in kidney cancer. And if you give individuals VEGF-targeted therapies, such as axitinib, uh, you can show immune infiltration. And so therefore, the addition of an immune therapy may augment that effect. And therefore, the combination of the two looks active in this group of patients. Potentially, uh, we performed a phase one trial, and that phase one trial showed high response rates above 60% with a tolerability which was acceptable. And so therefore, it was felt going against a benchmark control such as sunitinib, which is currently the standard of care, would be an attractive design for a randomized phase three study. The randomized phase three enrolled over 800 patients. It compared axitinib and pembrolizumab at standard doses with sunitinib. Um, the primary endpoints of the trial were both progression-free and overall survival. Uh, the results of the trial, which I'm presenting today, showed a 47% reduction in the risk of death associated with the axitinib and pembrolizumab. This is somewhat unprecedented in kidney cancer to have such a low hazard ratio of 0.53. Remember that drugs like sunitinib in the past never achieved survival benefit, but really focused on progression-free and response rates being higher than historical controls. It's therefore likely that these results will have a huge change in the way we treat patients with kidney cancer in the future. It wasn't just the overall survival that was better for axitinib and pembrolizumab compared to sunitinib. The response rates were also significantly higher and the progression-free survival was significantly longer. When one looks at the trial in detail, you can see the sunitinib patients actually perform well with a progression-free survival of 11 months. And therefore the results really are encouraging because not only did we achieve unprecedented overall survival results, we also achieved um, better response rates, longer progression-free survival. Um, therefore, the results of these, um, this trial is likely to be practice changing in the near future. It's very important to look at other issues such as tolerability. And when one looks at the adverse events in this study, grade three to four, the results were not dissimilar in both arms. Discontinuation for both axitinib and pembrolizumab occurred in about 8% compared to 10% with sunitinib and about 1% treatment-related death in both arms. Therefore, overall, the tolerability of the combination looks acceptable and in line with what one would expect by combining these two drugs together. In conclusion, the combination of axitinib and pembrolizumab together has unprecedented survival benefit with significant progression-free survival benefit and higher response rates. The tolerability appears acceptable and manageable in line with what one would expect. Efficacy occurred in biomarker PD1 positive groups as well as um, PDL1 negative groups, so efficacy irrespective of PDL1 status, and the same applies for the IMDC risk groups. Efficacy was better for axitinib and pembrolizumab in good, intermediate, and poor risk patients. And so therefore this is a broadly applicable regime with an exceptional, exceptional survival signal underpinned by progression-free survival and response rate results with an acceptable tolerability profile. Many thanks for your attention.